In this video I want to compare three different places where we can store data on the frontend and it is session storage, local storage and cookie. And the most common question that I'm getting from beginners is something like this. Ok, I am developing React application or maybe JavaScript application and when I am reloading the page, all my data are erased and everything is empty, what can I do about it? And actually you must remember that inside JavaScript we store all our variables and all our logic just inside memory, which actually means every single time when you reload the page everything is erased and you are starting from the beginning, this is how JavaScript works and you can't really change it, period. So how typical applications are working, we simply every single time after everything is erased, generate this data from the start or we fetch needed data from the API, which actually means data are removed in any case. But we also have another approach, if you don't know for example to bother yourself with APIs or backend or databases, then you can store this data locally inside browser. It is completely possible but it is not a production solution, because for production you typically want to store your user or your user data inside a database, you don't want to just store your data inside browser, because they can be erased and can't be validated. So the solutions are just for local development purposes, just to test something really quickly or just to store some additional properties just on the client side additionally to your database in production. So we have here three possibilities, we have local storage, session storage and cookie. And let's start with the local storage. Actually inside window, as you can see here, we have a property which is called local storage and as you can see this is a class storage. What we want to do here, we typically want two things, first of all write something to local storage and secondly read something from it. For this we are using local storage dot set item and it will add a key inside local storage. And you must understand that everything inside local storage is stored as a string and secondly as a key and value, which actually means here as you can see we are providing key and value. For example here let's say our key is foo and our value is bar. What does it mean? This line when we are calling it will set inside local storage our new key value pair. And actually now inside our Chrome DevTools we can check that we successfully created our new key inside local storage. And for this you can simply choose here application and after this on the left you have storage part. And we are interested here in our first tab, this is local storage, I will make it bigger. And as you can see this is the website now. And now we have our new key with foo and value bar. So actually here we can see all our keys which are related to this website. So the next question how we can read it from local storage and for this we are using local storage dot get item and here we are providing our unique key which is foo and as you can see we are getting back our string bar. And it is important to remember that we can store there only strings, which actually means if you want to store for example arrays or objects, which you typically want, then we must stringify this data first. For example here we can write local storage set item foo, but here we are not providing our bar, but we can provide here json.stringify and this is the function which can transform our array for example inside a string. And here inside I will provide array 1 to 3 and here I am hitting enter. As you can see now inside our application here, we can see that we have a string 1 to 3. And actually it is a string and Chrome DevTools simply parses it for us. But the main point is when we are using here local storage get item again, as you can see it is not an array, it is stringified array which is a string. Which actually means in this case, if you want to get your data back, you must parse them with JSON parse. So here we can write json.parse and we are getting our key back. And as you can see we are getting our array, which is exactly what we wanted. So these are two most popular commands that you will use with local storage. So when you must use local storage, if you simply want to store some property persistent between page reloads and you don't want to store this information inside your backend API or server. Now let's talk about some pros and cons. First of all local storage is supported in almost all browsers, at least modern browsers, which means we are on the safe side here. But here are also some limitations of local storage. First of all it can't be bigger than 5 megabytes per domain. And actually 5 megabytes is quite a lot, but you won't store the whole database there, it doesn't make any sense. 
Secondly, it is not supported in all the browsers, for example in EA8 and earlier, but typically it doesn't matter for you because you are supporting only modern browsers. And last point, which is super important, it is not related to your server in any way. You are storing just this data inside local storage and they are available only on frontend. You can't really get access to this data in any way inside your HTTP request. And this is important to remember, so your local storage is completely isolated inside client. Which actually means what we want to store in local storage is just some front-end data, which are not sensitive information. Why not sensitive? Because actually this data is available inside JavaScript. And it means that it is available for XSS attacks. And if you don't know what is XSS attacks, this is when somebody is calling some JavaScript code inside your browser, for example. And actually in this case, they can read all your local storage, for example, your tokens if they are stored in there, or do some request to the backend with your information. This is why it is super important that you avoid storing your personal information, some security information or tokens for authentication inside local storage. The next thing to talk about is session storage. And actually this is something that you can simply forget. Because session storage is exactly a copy paste of local storage, but it exists only inside current tab until you close this tab which actually means typically nobody is using it at all. And actually here you can see that we have session, storage, dot, get item, set item and all this stuff. For example, here we can use set item and we can write here foo and bar. It is working exactly the same. Now we can jump here inside our application and check on the left, not local storage, but session storage. And as you can see here, we have this key, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to use this feature because it is not persistent when you close and open your browser. And this is what you typically want. You want to store some information even when the user closes the browser. Which means local storage and session storage are identical, but we almost always are using local storage. And the last thing which is the most interesting is cookie. So what is cookie? This is also some kind of storage, but it is not directly a place where you store something. So actually you can set a cookie on the server and on the client, and then this cookie will be transported with your every single request from your client to your server. As you can see here, I am logged in inside Twitter, and inside my application cookies, I have lots of cookies, which actually means typically all these cookies were just generated on the backend, and this means that all these cookies are attached to every single request that we are making inside the system from the client to the server. This is why here I can jump inside network, select some request, and you can see here I have the request API Twitter, update subscriptions, and here on the tab cookies, you can see all cookies which are attached to this specific request. So this is actually the main difference. It is not really a storage, like for example local storage, but a way to store some information securely inside browser, which is available directly on the client and on the server. And the idea is that actually you can set cookie on the server and on the client. But typically we want to save our cookies secure and we don't want to allow accessing these cookies and modifying them inside client. And for this we have two properties. We can set a cookie with key HTTP only and with key secure. Secure means that this cookie will be only transferred through HTTPS, which is extremely safe, and HTTP only means that this cookie will be available only for server and not for client. And this is extremely secure, which actually means if you have some tokens or sensitive information, you always want to use for these cookies and not local storage. And secondly, you want to use these two keys, HTTP only and secure, so you make it really safe for your application. As you can see, all these cookies are attached with the request, and here we see our table with HTTP only and secure, and you can see that it is checked in some cookies. Now here I also must tell you about CSRF attacks. What does it mean? It means that you are opening some email, for example, from somebody, and you simply click on that link. The main problem is how the web is working at all. Actually, if the origin is the same inside this URL, then all cookies will be attached to your request. And this is how web is working. If the origin is the same, then all cookies are attached directly. Which actually means if you are logged in on some website and you simply click 
click on some link, then something bad can happen to you because you are logged in with your account, which actually means you are making something with your specific account by your authentication inside Cookie. So I highly recommend you not to open some strange emails and links from people that you don't know. So what are pros and cons of cookies? Actually, it's not really a storage. This is a place to store some data to communicate between client and server. And actually, you must understand that all these cookies is simply just a single string, which actually means we can't really store a lot of information there. But also, it is really good that inside cookies, we have this HTTP only and secure flags, which makes cookies really amazing for tokens and sensitive information. We also have expiry date on the cookies, as you can see here in the tab, which means we can set expiration date inside cookie and it helps also a lot. And as I already said, cookies are limited in size, it is just 4 kilobytes maximum, which actually means it is not exactly the place where you can store lots of data. So here is a conclusion. You really don't need to learn session storage and you don't need to use it. Secondly, you will use local storage typically if you want to store some data between page reloads and you only want to do it client side without any API or backend at all. And actually, if you want something secure for your sensitive information, or you want to make this information available for the client and the server with every single request, then cookie is your best bet. And actually, if you are interested to learn how web is working, make sure to check this video also.